Hello guys, so behind me is the 510 horsepower beast that is the BMW M4, but most of you probably already noticed that is not the ordinary M4 coupe, it is in fact a cabriolet. And those of you who are even more clued up will know that this is the X-Drive version because of course here in the UK it's currently only available as X-Drive and for those that don't know that means it's all-wheel drive. Yes, for the first time the M4 and the M3 are available from BMW as four-wheel drive. So the question is, first of all, how does it being a cabriolet affect the way the M4 drives? And second of all, how does it being all-wheel drive affect the way it drives? Is it still a proper M car as an all-wheel drive M4? So of course there's only one way to find out. We'll jump behind the wheel and see how it drives. So here we go guys, the BMW M4 Competition X-Drive Convertible. Another thing you might notice straight away about this car is this lovely satin blue finish on the paint, frozen colour from BMW. I really like that actually. I don't know if I'd pick it myself because it's an expensive option and it might not necessarily be so desirable when someone comes to buy it, but it still looks great. You can see pretty much all the same styling as the M4 Coupe, obviously with the change of the soft top roof. BMW brought back the soft top for this generation, hasn't been seen for a few generations now, but they call it a soft top, but quite honestly, this may as well be a hard top, especially when you're on the inside, there's virtually no wind noise and the how secure the thing feels, you would be forgiven for not even realizing necessarily that it was a convertible. Other things to point out, got the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S's, giving this car even more grip on top of the fact that it is now all-wheel drive. I drove the M3 recently, the rear-wheel drive version, and in that car, you could be forgiven for thinking that it was an all-wheel drive car already. That is the amount of grip this car has. So the question is, is it even necessary for this car to take the step up to being all-wheel drive, or is it just added weight and added cost? Other things to point out on this car, the iconic four exhaust tips from BMW, which sound fantastic. And with the roof down, as you can imagine, they sound even better. Of course, big talking point on this car is the folding soft top. And a neat trick that it has is you can actually put the roof down from the key. If I press and hold unlock, and you bear with me a moment, See, the windows are opening, and there we go, the soft top is folding as well. Soft top takes just 18 seconds to completely open or close, and you can actually do it up to 30 miles an hour as well. So if you get caught in the rain, you do not have to worry about getting wet. You can just put the roof down as you drive. So with the roof down, you can appreciate the uh, spacious cabin of the M4. Obviously, this is a view that you cannot get in the coupe. However, in the back, Adults would fit back here, just the two of them, of course, but I would think twice before taking a long journey with not too much leg room, especially with your knees against these cold, hard carbon fibre seat backs. I'm not a big fan of these seats. They are a expensive option, and I would... I don't find them very comfortable. And they've got this strange holder down here. I don't know what that's meant to do, but I don't find it very comfortable at all. So, despite all of BMW's trickery, this car does have quite a weight gain over the standard M4 Coupe. First of all, it's convertible, that adds quite a bit of weight, and second of all, it's all-wheel drive. So in total, you're looking at a 200 kilogram weight gain over the standard car. But that said, the three liter, six cylinder twin turbo engine, 510 horsepower, over 600, I think 650 Newton meters of torque, doesn't hang about. It still manages not to 60 in an astonishing 3.7 seconds to rewind 10 years you know that's supercar speed it's incredible that a car like this can go this quickly to 60 and from what i've driven of it so far i must say i don't think you really notice first of all the weight gain and second of all the loss in uh, structural rigidity from having the roof down it is a very well put together car but the question is is it any fun to drive and is it still a proper m car so let's jump behind the wheel and find out so seated now inside the cabin of the M4, first thing I will do after turning the engine on, of course, hear it fire into life, is put the roof back up so you guys can actually hear me over the wind noise when driving along. So just press this button down, and as I say, in a mere 18 seconds, the soft top is folded into place. But as I say, this thing's so well put together, you would barely know that it was a soft top. So in the cabin, we've got lovely virtual cockpit display, again with the familiar 
BMW infotainment that has all the usual bells and whistles as you'd expect. Plenty of carbon fibre in here as well to remind you that this is a sporty car. Of course, there's not really any weight saving going on with this kind of thing. Uh, it is not a light car. Those bucket seats that I mentioned, lots of support, but I'm quite fussy when it comes to seats and they don't gel very well with me, unfortunately, but that's okay. At the moment, I've got the car turned on. There is an exhaust button. If you press it, you can just about hear a change in tone. We've also got M mode, which it is, we've just put it into sport now. And of course that stiffens everything up, increases the throttle response and so on. You can put it into track mode as well, which turns off the traction control, not recommended for on-road use. But all very well, we're gonna go for a drive now and see how this thing compares to M cars of old. So probably the first thing you can tell when you get behind the wheel is that there's some serious power under the hood in this car. 510 horsepower is a lot of power. I'm kind of of the opinion that 400, 450 is the most power that a car would ever need for you to have a lot of fun without getting into serious trouble. And this car is starting to get into the realms of too much power. But that said, it's got all these electronic systems that do their absolute best to keep you out of trouble at all times. So I quickly flick the gearbox into manual, shift down a couple of gears, and give it a little tickle. And straight away, I mean, you can probably hear over the camera that this thing has some serious grunt. With the roof down, it sounded even better, but I'll put the roof up now so that you don't have to suffer wind noise over the video. One thing I did notice was just the tiniest bit of flex and scuttle from having the roof down from the loss of uh, rigidity but really tiny you know that you could barely notice you would be forgiven especially if you weren't too familiar with how the standard m3 drives to be forgiven for thinking that this car wasn't a convertible quite honestly Sunny day with the roof down, put the foot down, 
occasionally put a smile on your face, but I found when I drove the standard M3 actually in the summer, the only time it really made me smile was when I did an enormous burnout in it. And that's the one thing that this car can't do, or can't do as well, with it being the all-wheel drive version. So it's just, it's a little bit too much point and go for me, you know, hold on for dear life and let the immense power do all the work in a very, you know, go very quickly in a straight line just feels a bit too detached and numb for me which is a shame because that's not what an M car is to me an M car is as I said you know an older M3 or a 1M something that you could go throw around country lanes and feel really connected to So there we go guys, that was a quick drive with you in the BMW M4 Competition Convertible X-Drive. So what did I think? Obviously, incredibly capable car, but would I buy one? That's the all important question. No, I would not buy one, several reasons. First of all, this car is starting from around 85 grand, but spec'd up like this one with the satin paint and the carbon fibre seats and so on, I don't know exactly, but it's gotta be knocking on the door of 100 grand at least. And that is a lot of money. And I tell you what, this car won't be worth anything like that in five years. In two years even, it won't be worth anything like that. And if history is anything to go by, convertible and all wheel drive, I have a feeling that these ones will depreciate harder than the rear wheel drive coupe versions. You know, if you look at an E46 M3, you know, if you bought a Cabriolet, then you kind of made a mistake. Whereas the coupe is now worth a lot of money. I just think a car like this is not going to stand the test of time and it is too quick. It's incredibly capable, but it's it's not fun as a result. I think it's a lot of money to get on paper, a lot of car, but it doesn't give me very many thrills. You know, the coring forces, the braking forces, the acceleration, all immense. But actually, it kind of takes it out of you. It really, you feel exhausted at the end of a drive instead of delighted. And that, that's my take on it. A lot of people love this car. But for me personally, I would not spend my own money on one, unfortunately. As much as I respect its abilities, it's not for me.